Gordon Brown has vowed to sweep aside the short-term bonus culture that has seen billions of pounds flow into the pockets of Britain's bankers. His comments came as the Treasury launched a long-term review of pay in the city. Critics say it'll take far too long and they want action now. Here's John Moylan. There's little to match the City of London when it comes to financial rewards. But could the mega bonuses which fuel champagne lifestyles be about to disappear? Some believe that the bonus culture here in the city may have played a significant role in the financial crisis which led to the global downturn. Why? Because in pursuing huge bonuses, individuals took excessive risks which ultimately brought the financial system to the brink of disaster. Little wonder that reports that RBS is to pay out up to a billion pounds in bonuses has caused such an outcry. Today, politicians on all sides insisted that banks, which were bailed out by taxpayers, should not be rewarded for failure. Sweeping aside the old short-term bonus culture of the past and replacing it with, first of all, a determination that there are no rewards uh, for failure, and secondly, that there are rewards only for long-term, not short-term, but long-term uh, success. The bank has got to have a bit of a wake-up and smell of a coffee moment and recognise, actually, hold on, we wouldn't be here, we wouldn't have jobs, we wouldn't get anything, were it not for the taxpayer standing behind us. This is our common throughout banking. Depending upon the company's performance, branch-level staff might receive in the region of a few hundred pounds. Moving up the pay scale, traders will get a bonus based more upon their individual performance. Here, six-figure sums are common. And in the boardroom, payouts are based on key targets, such as profit growth, and can amount to millions of pounds. Take, for example, three of the biggest names in the business. Last year, the then chief executive of RBS, Sir Fred Goodwin, enjoyed a total remuneration, including bonus, of £4.2 million. Eric Daniels, the chief executive of Lloyd's TSB, which also received taxpayer money, took home £4.8 million. However, those figures were dwarfed by Barclays' head of corporate banking, Bob Diamond. He received a £5.6 million cash bonus, plus millions more in shares. Those sorts of payouts are unlikely to be repeated for years to come. And while contracts might mean some staff at bailed out banks receive a cash sum, Others will be happy just to keep their jobs. I think the top has been and gone. Uh, we've, we've passed the high water mark and we're now on a fairly substantial downward curve that is going to result in a complete rebalancing of how bonuses are approached, how remuneration is approached, and how risk is approached. And a lot of people out here at the moment are saying, forget about the bonus, I'm happy to still have my job. Financial rewards will be at the heart of the government's new review of the banking system, but as the major banks prepare to report annual results, some tough decisions on bonuses lie ahead. John Moylan, BBC News. Well, as the row over bonuses for bankers continues, Barclays has revealed that its top directors won't be getting any this year. The bank has also begun a review of performance-related pay. Today, Barclays reported profits of just over £6 billion before tax, down 14% on 2007. The more senior people are within the organisation, the more accountable they are held. It's no coincidence that the executive directors of Barclays are getting no variable compensation in 2008. That seems to me to be entirely right when I look at the fact that our profits are down and when I think how difficult the experience of our shareholders has been. Well, let's get the latest now from our political editor, Nick Robinson, in Downing Street. Nick, Gordon Brown says 